hey what's up guys today in this video we are going to look at how to go ahead and install swagger so that we can have a nice looking documentation for our api it's a very seamless integration with nest.js when you write your routes and your controller has basic definitions which will in the end allow you to create that beautiful swagger documentation so let's get started i will follow the instructions which are present in the documentation for the installation part okay it's quite straightforward we first install this npm modules okay and then we have a little bit of configuration for swagger to start on a particular url and then i'll show you how we configure every model every dto and controller to get certain information on swagger in the meantime i would like to tell you one thing i have updated the dependencies of this application to the latest level so if you go to github and let us say this is the url right so i have created a tag where if you go to 001 this is the version where i have the latest dependencies and if you go to my commits you will see this version has all the updates right and I would strongly suggest that when you are installing Swagger, you first should get the latest version of the code. And once done, only then go with the Swagger installation. So my you know, Swagger NPM modules are installed. Then there is a little bit of configuration. I will just steal this piece of code from here. Go to main.ts and maybe paste a few things over here and let's add all missing imports so what are we doing let's quickly look at these things so we are building a configuration variable from document builder that's fine so these are some of the parameters for example set title set description version and build okay with this configuration what we have done is we created one more variable called document we call the swagger module dot create document where we pass the app this is the nest app if you see it must be taking the inest application right so we pass the app as the first parameter and config as the second and we get a document and then in the end we are saying swagger module setup api this is the url which you can have anything my api or swagger something like that i will keep it as api it feels better and we are passing the app and we are passing this document that we just created with this in place the first thing which is going to happen is on your app which is running on localhost 3000 i'll start seeing this thing okay this is my title and this is the description and these are all the routes which are present inside my application so now if we go into the register method for example right this should ideally be the first way of sharing the api so let's just say the front end developer is working on building the ui and you said okay this is the url you can go to swagger and see what kind of request body is being expected and what kind of responses you are going to get now it, at this moment there is nothing in it for the front end developer to understand but you will see very soon with some basic changes i will be able to create a nice looking documentation over here so let's see i'll go to my code the first thing is obviously go to user controller the registration url is taking the user register uh, request dto so first of all we will add certain properties in our dto for swagger to show them on the documentation page so for example right now it doesn't show anything in the schema it just says user registration dto is being used correct but if we do api property and add a few properties to it so with this done if i now refresh can you see that it shows me what kind of parameters are required and if i actually try the json gets filled up with name so let's fill the other details as well 
All right, so I have populated the API property on all the items. And now if I refresh, can you see this is getting populated, right? So at least now we have a clear documentation of what is the request body that is required by the front end developer or anyone to send so that our user can register. But now there is also one more thing, which is we need to show the response, right? Because that's also very important. So how do we do that? Let's go to our user controller. Inside the user controller, let's just add. So we have API response and then we have other kinds of properties as well. I'll quickly show you in the documentation where to find all of them. I think it's somewhere. Operations. Yes, responses. I think it's the responses. If you see API OK response, API created response, API accepted response, so on and so forth. Even, you know, bad requests and unauthorized responses are available. What we want to do over here is, first of all, an API create response. So let me see. This is our API create response. If you go inside them, you will see all the keys which are available, which you can fill in. I'll just add the description. Okay, something like this. And if I go over here, let's just say this thing can fail, right? Um, so maybe what I will do is add a bad request as well. So API bad request. This is bad gateway. This is bad response, right? And maybe add a description again over here, which is user was not user cannot register try again something like that with this now let's refresh our swagger ui and see what is happening so now can you see this is the request body this is the response and the response is created user object as response 201 is a status code which i can expect 400 is an user uh, user code which i expect which is fine but then but there is no response object or to us to say there's no defined JSON data, which I can understand will I'll be getting as a UI developer uh, in response when the user has registered. Right. So let's see how we can add that. So in here, there is a property called type. And in that I can add the type of object I'm expecting with this. Now, can you see this thing changed? I'm saying that this is the kind of data which will come in, but obviously I imported the model, right? The entity, but the entity doesn't have any definition to it. And if I quickly add them, you will see that these things will come up. So let's quickly add that again. These will be API properties. Okay. So I have all the properties added over here. I haven't added the created at and updated at column. Let's see now what comes up over here, right? So I can see all these stuff. Maybe I'll just add API property. These two items as well and see what comes up. Right. So the dates are coming. So generally speaking, we are able to get the entire thing. So this entire documentation is kind of done. If you see the registration gives me the request body responses and the beautiful thing is if i try to use this maybe just try to register the user let me open up my database as well right so this is my database i have only one user let's go over here and execute okay this is done this is the curl command which got executed and in the response i got this id is 18 let's see perfect so we have this in place and this basically means I can use this Swagger documentation to not only interact with my API, but also give it as a documentation. And one last thing which I would like to tell you is you know, there is right now this default thing. If you see there is schemas, we have all the details, we have our model definition as well, but everything over here is inside default, right? But uh, we can divide them, we can group them. Uh, into different kinds of API 
uh, stuff. I mean, for example, all the user routes may go inside one particular thing. So for that, what you can do is go inside your controller. I'll go inside my controller and over here where you have this controller definition, right? You can do API tag and just add user to it. With this done, if I now refresh, can you see that particular API came inside the user thing? For, so for example, if I go to quiz, the quiz controller, and API tags, add quiz, hit refresh, oops. So all the three URLs or the API routes which are present inside this controller goes in that particular group or that tag. So we are able to visually kind of bifurcate all the different kinds of routes and so you can quickly navigate to them you know, if, if required. So you know when, when your application grows, you will definitely have a lot, lot of routes and it makes sense to tag them and group them logically. So yes, this is what Swagger documentation help you with. I find this tool to be very interesting and, ex um, and I really use it a lot. It not only allows me to create a you know, documentation, so as to say for my APIs, but it also allows me to actually test the API calls because you know, I can always go into the tryout and register a user, see whether the thing is working properly or not, you know, and validate whatever is done before passing <coughs> on the API to the front end team to work on. So yeah, this is typically what I do and that's why I like it. Let me know what are your thoughts about this thing. If you like this video, do click on the thumbs up icon and yes, don't forget to subscribe to my channel.